This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Mile High Ambulance. Hey, EMM. We are excited to announce that we are now accepting applications for our second annual Diversity and Inclusion Award. The award is eligible to fourth-year med students identifying as underrepresented in medicine and are applying to EM residencies. We are extending three $200 awards to selected individuals following a blinded review of all applications. Applications will be accepted through the end of November with winners being announced mid-December. Check out our website at www.emergencymedicalminute.org slash EDI dash award for all the details and to access the free application. Or you can click on the link in our show notes. Thank you. All right, so I wanted to do a medical minute on a recent update that is hopefully going to be pretty practice changing. And it's about a recent publication in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. It's the 2022 ACC Expert Consensus Decision Pathway on the Evaluation and Disposition of Acute Chest Pain in the Emergency Department. And so there's lots of different things that were commented on in this document, but the real big one is the recognition of uh, STEMI equivalents. So basically, just as a brief rundown, historically, it's been recognized that STEMIs are things that need to go to the cath lab. And the reasoning behind that is that, oh, these patients have an occluded coronary artery that needs to be reopened in order to get reperfusion. Now, what we've found in the recent years is that you can have an occluded coronary artery and not necessarily have a STEMI. And so what matters physiologically is whether or not the patient has an occluded coronary artery and not necessarily if they have a STEMI. And so what these guidelines are now recognizing, and in large part thanks to the work of um, people like Steve Smith and Pendle Myers, is that there are STEMI equivalents that need to go to the cath lab. And so the big ones are a posterior uh, infarct, so that can be uh, an RCA occlusion or something like that. that. That will manifest as ST depression in the precordial leads because you don't have EKG leads on the back of your chest here, you know. And so if you have a STEMI basically in the back of the heart, reciprocally, that'll be ST depression in the front of the heart. So ST depression in the precordial leads is now recognized as a potential STEMI equivalent. Also, if you have a left bundle branch block, and you have ST elevation with it, and it meets the modified Scarbosa criteria, that is also indication to go to the cath lab. And then there are things um, that uh, are seen that affect the T waves, specifically hyperacute T waves and de winter T waves, which are also indications. So if you just acutely occlude a coronary artery, you're not gonna have a STEMI right away. The first thing that you're gonna have is the T waves blow up and you get these hyperacute T waves, and so, that is the person who would benefit the most from going to the cath lab because they have the most salvageable myocardium. You're catching it right away. Like they're not gonna have a STEMI right away. You don't wanna wait for them to have their, you know, entire wall infarcted. You want to get that person to the cath lab right away. So it's really important that this is now being recognized and I wonder if it's gonna kinda change some of our uh, pathways. So anyway, that's a recent publication and um, something interesting and honestly kind of long overdue. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Health One Continental Division and Swedish Medical Center for their financial contributions to the EMM. Donations from them and listeners like you make it possible for us to fulfill our mission of producing and spreading free medical education to the masses. If you enjoy our show, please consider making a one-time or reoccurring donation to help cover our operational costs and keep the EMM awesome. Click on the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you for listening.